Should you be writing your own Blazor components? You and your team are likely already using a Blazor component library, but there comes a time where that library doesn't always provide the functionality you need. When that time comes, you need to make a decision on how you're gonna get that functionality into your project. Most developers think this is an easy decision and therefore make that decision rashly. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all the things that you should be considering so that you can make the best decision on whether you should be writing your own Blazor components or not. I recently had to make a very similar choice when my wife gave me the task of organizing a birthday cake for my nephew, Jason. Jason, like every growing lad, loves chocolate cake. He's also a massive Spider-Man fan. At his upcoming party, this cake needed to be big enough to feed all the 20 kids that were gonna be there. I needed to come up with a Spider-Man chocolate cake that was massive, and I don't know anything about baking. So off I went to the first shop, and unfortunately the first shop only sold Batman cakes. No good there. The next shop I went to did Spider-Man cakes, but they only had vanilla flavor. Finally, after a few days of hunting, I found a perfect chocolate Spider-Man cake that was massive, big enough, but it cost $400. So that's when I started looking at ingredients and started thinking, how am I gonna make my own cake? This is largely exactly what happens to us developers. We get given a new requirement, we immediately look at our existing library, we realize our existing library can't do the requirement we've got, we then read the documentation over and over to make sure we haven't missed anything, but invariably we then go on a hunt on where we can find a component that can do the thing that we need it to do with the exact functionality that we require. Now the internet's a big place and you'll probably find a component that sounds like it's going to meet your exact requirements. But the moment you get a component, you are subconsciously analyzing it to see how well it fits your requirement. On the one end of the spectrum, it fits your requirement exactly. And on the other end, it doesn't fit it at all and is completely unusable. The bar at which you're willing to accept will generally move depending on your exact needs for your project. So in my situation, I was unwilling to upset my nephew and get him a Batman cake. Rather, I thought he would have been more okay with a sponge cake instead of a chocolate cake. In software, it works a similar way. Sometimes you can speak to your uh, superior or to the customer and convince them to not get the full functionality and say, we can't give you this exact thing, but maybe we can do this for you instead. The point is that most developers won't even consider writing their own component until all the other options are exhausted. They can't find any component, they've scoured the internet, or their customer or their manager is willing to move on the requirements. Instead of only choosing to write your own component, at the very end of the spectrum, when your pre-built component doesn't meet the requirements at all, you should rather be considering your own component at any point of, along the spectrum. The reason most developers don't normally do this is because they only take the requirements as the only thing to consider. Well, some of the things you haven't considered might be your own personal goals. Yes, it's great to think about the team, but at some point we, you need to think about yourself and what are you doing this career for or this hobby for. Most of us want to be a better developer, be a better programmer, and there's few better ways than learning by doing. Writing your own component will give you a fantastic deep understanding of the Blazor framework. If you consider the alternative where you just grab a pre-built component and add it to your existing system, you are really just improving your integration skills. The obvious consideration here is the project timeline especially if you're new to it, writing your own component can be exceptionally time consuming, potentially detrimental to the project. You'll need to ensure that writing your own component won't take more time than it is worth it for the project. This is where using a pre-existing component wins. That is, of course, you're not spending days or weeks testing all these different components for, to see if it matches the functionality you need. And then you need to consider the future of the component. What about the maintenance? If you've written your own component, it's up to you to maintain that component in the future. This includes any documentation for the component. While it's less important if you're a sole developer, you still really should be documenting what you're doing for any sort of API. With a pre-built component, the developers of that library or component are responsible for maintaining it. This can be a positive and a negative. It's awesome when the developers are actively modifying and fixing bugs on that component, but there is nothing worse than having a component in your project that you're using that has a bug that you're waiting for for someone to fix. It could be months, 
even years before someone actually does anything about it or they could even abandon the project entirely and then you're stuck with a component that is flawed. And that brings us to how you, well you can customize it. Of course, if it's your component, you have full control of what you want to do with the component. How you want to customize it, what features it has, what features it doesn't have, what it looks like, you can tailor it exactly to your needs. Whereas with a pre-built component, you may end up with a bloated feature set. A great example is the data grid. Likely in the library you're using now, there's a data grid with a ton of features which you probably never use. This automatically adds complexity to your project whether you want it or not. This is similar to the dependencies. A pre-built component will come with a myriad of dependencies, often which can introduce compatibility and versioning issues. Whereas with your own component, you are free to have as many or as few dependencies as you want or need. But this really all comes down to the skill level of you. You need to make consideration for, are you and your team capable of developing the component that you need and the functionality that you need? If you go with an established component, there's a good chance that a lot of the bugs and problems have been ironed out. And especially if you are paying for that component. If you go with something yourself, and especially if you're not at the skill level you need to be, you've got a chance of introducing bugs into your project. But all these considerations really just need to align with your goals. If your goals right then and there are to get the project out and meet the deadlines, then perhaps the pre-built one is the option for you. But if you've got goals like the rest of us of just improving your skills and being a better developer, that often means taking the longer, harder road. Writing your own components can be a fantastic learning experience, even though it is the longer road. Libraries are getting more and more advanced and more fully featured. So when there is something that is missing functionality, adding new functionality that those libraries don't have tends to be more intimidating and more complex. You really should start by replacing simple and easy components till you get the hang of it. I suggest replacing simple components that the library already provides. That way you can build your skills and see the benefits of writing your own components provides. Just like me, I'm gonna be heading into the kitchen and learning how to make the basic of sponge cakes so that when my nephew's next birthday comes around, I'll be ready for a kick-ass cake. Like the video if you like chocolate cake, Spider-Man, or writing your own components. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.